Hello and welcome back to An Abundance of Not. It is August 26th. We're here with Brad and Wade. Hello. Hi. And from one of, from one of if not the first time, uh, all in one place. Yeah. On the we're West Coast Studio. We're all yeah. in the West Coast Studio this week. How's that feel for you? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, we'll make do. How many times did we try try to get this done? We've tried a few. We yeah. may have succeeded once prior, but that's still up for debate. <laughs> I've slept since then. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've drank since then. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. PG. Guilty on all occasions. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So uh, what's going on? We missed you last week. Uh, um, still on the home buying uh, saga. So... Last week we were uh, house shopping in Atlanta, found a couple of options, um, tried to buy one, now not so sure, we got the inspection report back from it, and a eh, little more to repair than we were hoping for, um, so we're still trying to debate what to do on that, uh, maybe going to our backup choice. Um, yeah, so uh, the rest of our weekend, I mean, we... We actually went geocaching this weekend. I don't know if you've ever tried that. I have not tried it. Yeah. I'm mildly familiar with it. What is it? Because I'm not familiar with it, and I think our viewers would like to know. Sure. Listeners. So, um, the best way I've ever heard it described, and my wife found this, uh, uh, I think it might have been on Reddit, but don't quote me on that, is geocaching is where you use multi-million dollar satellites to find Tupperware lost in the woods. Yes. So, so essentially what it's happens a, it's, is... It's a glorified um, scavenger hunt. Yep. Wow. People post up clues or whatever, mm -hmm. and you use GPS, GPS more or less to go try to find what's been left behind. And they vary in size. Um, some of the bigger caches are, like I said, probably about Tupperware size. Uh, and they go down from there pretty much. Um, they go into... Uh, medium, small, mini, micro, nano. So this is like a, like a treasure hunt? Is yeah, it like we put, like, put something in like a Tupperware and then like... And hide it. Oh, Sometimes okay. it's just a piece of paper just for you to write your name there that you've, you've yeah, been they there. Yeah, they all have logs in them to yep. record that you found it. Um, oh, some of cool. them, we found some last weekend. Um, I don't know how many of our listeners now in the digital age will even know what I'm talking about, but... Uh, 35 millimeter foam canisters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wrapped in camouflage duct tape and okay. stuck in a tree. And then just inside of that was the was log. Was the log. Yep. There, was, there were no prizes or anything. Yep. It was just, you know, hey, I found it. You know, it's it's about the it's about the journey. Yeah, really. It's like you know, Kilroy the, was the here. challenge. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, some of the bigger ones have prizes in them, and it's all on a um, take one, leave one basis uh, yep. so you bring something with you and you leave it in there uh, and you yeah, take something it. out of it and it's it's you know a fun trek through the woods we found some stuff back in woods and there are even for for the um those allergic to nature there are urban geocaches um we found one that was uh magnetized and stuck to the ba to the back of a uh highway guard railing oh nice yeah yeah Really creative stuff. So that, uh, we had soccer Saturday. And then we've been on a kick uh, for a new TV show. We've been binge watching on Netflix, Once Upon a Time. We've watched that regularly and love it. Yeah. Fantastic so, show. So no, no spoilers, please. We're no, in season two right now. Yeah, it's great. They bring in they bring in people from all different walks of the quote-unquote fairy, fairy tale, tale yeah. life. Yeah, it's been um, amazing to see. So slight spoiler is that... The season that just finished, four. Uh, I think it's four, had Elsa and Anna from Frozen. No! Yes. No! Okay. I didn't hear that! La, 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 okay. la, la, la. And the new season is going to have Mirda from Brave. Nice! Um, but yeah, they bring in Robin Hood, um, they bring in uh, Corella DeVille, they bring in all these different characters, and they they really kind of explore what, what would happen. Really, the gist of the whole show is what happened to fairy tale characters were real uh were brought into yep. this world did you catch the cameo in the first episode or not cameo but call for the first episode no the when the sheriff i don't remember his name the particular time when they first came in and there was a guy in it's, the cell no 
You're thinking Eureka. We're talking Once Upon a Time. No, hold on. Let me get to the thing. Because that's the same opening. Yes. So far. And and the guy and the sheriff tells him tells the guy in the cell to smile, and the guy smiles and instantly goes back to to frowning. Okay. Grumpy. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the dwarves, the dwarves are in there, all that stuff. Sorry, I thought you were talking about in Eureka, where when he's driving into the town, there's a car leaving. No, I was At like, the in the jail cell. Episode. Oh, no, that wasn't the car. Was no, no, there's I a car leaving the jail cell? What? I didn't, I didn't it's hear called the, the jail cell. Yeah. <laughs> it's called quantum physics. <laughs> and Eureka <laughs> is actually on the pretty inside. much. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're we're really enjoying it. And, and liking the twists on some of the characters. Yes. And the way that they're overlaying some of the stories. Yeah, they do a really good job with that in the show and they really add a lot of complexity. I'm a big fan of, Je- of Jennifer Morrison who plays yep. Emma from yep. House um, and she's she's essentially the main on that. Um, but yeah, yeah, fantastic show. I recommend it. I even have one of the guys in the pool team I was on or I'm still slightly partaking. I mentioned it to him and he he's gotten, he and his wife have gotten into it and it's an easy show to do. So I definitely recommend it. Yes, and it's addictive. Yes. Be warned. Yep. Set aside some time because if you get to binge watch it, you will. Yeah, we've got addicted to um, The Killing, also on Netflix. It used to be an A&E show. I think for the first two or three seasons it got dropped, and then uh, Netflix picked it up for the either third and fourth season or at least the fourth season. Uh, And that's a fantastic show, and it kind of dives into the whole... um, homicide detective going down a path and based on the information they have and then finding out that that's they follow that path so aggressively that they miss maybe clues that are taking them to or they uncover that next piece that actually takes them in a different direction it's it's pretty well done um it's we're, we're almost finished with that i think we're we might be into the fourth season right now that's really good cool yay <clears throat> Um, How was your weekend? Uh, mine, mine was full of ups and downs. Uh, for our listeners who have kept track, <laughs> that was a drone joke. That was a drone joke. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, so I've got the the flight controller and everything came in for the drone on Friday, uh, in which I had a very hard time leaving, not leaving work to go get it, knowing that I couldn't do anything had I had it in my hand anyway, until I had time to mess with it. Um, yeah, but just having it in your hand. Just having it in my hand. With all the... So as I've mentioned before, I am obsessive impulsive. And uh, must must have now you know. in my no. hands. <laughs> uh, being on the doorstep uh, is not good enough. I must tangibly have possession. So, um, yeah, that came in. I spent Friday evening uh, installing and Saturday trying to troubleshoot because it didn't take off according to plan. And then Sunday morning, I've got it somewhat controllable. and <laughs> Somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, there's a lot of really fine-tuning that really need to be spent a lot more time on. And sadly, a lot of the documentation with most of these components come with a degree of assumption to the end user. So at this point, I'd like to point out for our listeners that this is not a pre-made drone. Yes. Nor is it a kit that you just have to put together. You Correct. piece this together out of various uh, components of your own choosing. Various components, usually resulting in lack of knowledge or uh, <laughs> naivety. Obviously. Yes. No, I fell in love with a, a certain type of frame. I could have bought that whole unit ready to fly, but that was a big price chunk at the time. And so in order to kind of lessen the burden, I have pieced it all together. And satisfy the impulsiveness. <laughs> For yes. those wondering, it's a Frankenstein job. <laughs> it's, it's a Frankenstein job. Um, but so I got it flying Sunday, and then we went to a free concert in the park again this week, the last one of the summer. I brought it with me because it was a big open space, and I thought I could uh, you know, do some practicing and found out one of the components had gone bad. Uh, sometime between midday on Sunday and towards the end of the day. So it was grounded until Monday evening. Um, yeah, got it together, flew it a little bit, adjusted some settings, and uh, pretty much uh, foobarred the whole thing. So so do we now christen her Frankendroid? Uh, Frankendroid? I don't think Frankendroid is appropriate for her Frank-a-drone. yet. Frankendrone. 
I haven't I haven't come up with a name. She does need a name, uh, and we'll we'll figure that out as time goes. But uh, we're gonna do some testing tonight, hopefully, or at least later this week, and see if we can get a little bit more uh, under control. Airborne. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> just 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 airborne would be good at this. Because right now she's in a crate and uh, looking mighty pitiful. But yeah, that was my weekend. That was pretty much my sole focus. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Well, I actually, surprisingly, actually have a couple, two stories to tell. Woohoo! I know, shocking for no one, so I just stayed home and did Jack, but no. Um, on the way home, hi, yeah, by the way, he's just like staring right at me, guys. It's really creepy. <laughs> Wade's having a problem because he's not used to Brad being in the local studio. I just don't and, like eyes, for God's sake. And if uh, Garrett knows this. He's getting some... Anywho, uh, um, on the way to work, I stopped by the gas station, and during Philip heard a noise... Well, the guy on the other side of the ga- the gas pump decided to drive to drive away with the hose still in the car. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's wow. not a good day. <laughs> well, let's just say I learned something new, and those things have a have a release uh, yes coupling. They're designed to break away at so that the whole gas station doesn't blow up. <laughs> so the the gas station attendant comes out and and you know has a starts talking to the guy and you know, how to, you know, to pay to fix it, yada, yada, yada. And of course, I, as I'm walking to go get a drink inside the gas, inside the gas station, because there's two attendants, uh, I see a black object in front of the car. And so I walk over, and, I, and as I'm getting closer to it, I see what it is. It's his gas cap. Nice. I, I, I come up to him, and I was like, I know this is probably more insult to injury, but here. That, this is yours. <laughs> He's like, and the guy's face is like, I'm an idiot. Uh, but yeah, that was one. Then um, actually, I think it was yesterday, um, the airport was doing some advertising for, uh, well, obviously more people to come in. And they did the unit that I work in. Nice. So yes, I am now in advertising. In, so that yes, I did actually have to sign that was it this disclosure or uh, uh, release? Yeah, the release. Yeah, release. Yep. So Wade's an official uh, commercial actor. For, for nice. Yeah. Yeah. This is, well, it was basically to show, like, this is our airport. This is why okay. you shouldn't come here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> they saw me and it's like, nope, we're done. No. Do you want to take off before 7 o'clock and land after 10? Then go to LAX. <laughs> <laughs> Don't work at LAX, but <laughs> Don't right. come to Santa Ana Airport. Thank you. Goodbye. Speaking of, I was yeah I, I, I completely slipped my mind. Didn't even think about it. I should have come down. And say, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> should have come and said hello. Friday. Hey, hey. you working Friday? For those nope. of you who oh, caught the mite in there, you will remind our fans that uh, Brad is a transplant from Down Under. <laughs> that was not anything racist. I'm sorry. That was just more of like force of habit. What are you, you talking say about? That regularly? Yeah, actually, because I watch a lot of British uh, uh, YouTubers. What? I didn't What'd say you say? Mate. He said mate. I was pretty sure you said mate. I no, that was me. Oh. He said mate. Okay, Wade said mate because he wants to be British, and uh, I thought it was Brad it's... because he he used to be Australian. <laughs> that's, to that's, be. That's, why I, <laughs> that's why I had to clarify because I'm the one who said it. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Gary. You're Jeez. welcome. Pay attention, man. Hey, I was uh, taking care of our followers on Twitter, so... <laughs> uh, I, I don't done. think I want to know what the heck you were taking out of your I'm Twitter. multitasking <laughs> to our many, many Twitter followers. Thank you, by the way. Yes, Twitter so followers. good shout out here at the beginning rather than at the end. Oh, you like that? Yeah, I like that. There so uh, check us out on Twitter, at Abundance Not. That's right. And um, because Brad wasn't here for the last podcast, uh, I dropped a bombshell at the end of last podcast and uh, <laughs> told, told our, our listeners, our followers, that if we get up to 500 or when we get up to 500 Twitter followers, we will be doing a raffle giveaway. So uh, when we hit 500, we will... Brad shaking his head in <laughs> fear. We will release more details. So do share us with, uh, with your friends and keep in touch. Moving on. Uh, so you did your acting. You're now... Are you going to be on IMDb now? Are you going to be a, come did up under... Did you have to get a Screen Actors Guild card? Or yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's inducting just... Inducting you? Are you going to the Grammys? It's this just... It's, that's framed. On, on nice. Like, nice. <laughs> it's got it blown up. He's got... Yeah. I think I have I think I have a seat at the Academy Awards next to Jennifer Lawrence. No. <laughs> I hate you. 
<laughs> and right. the Academy Award for Best New Actor in Advertising goes to... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking of entertainment, let's just jump into some movies. 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 Looks like we only got a couple to talk about this week. First one being No Escape at 40%. This is with Owen Wilson and Pierce Brosnan, along with uh, Lake Bell, who she looks familiar, but I'm not sure where I know her from. Uh, this is rated R, so leave the little kitties at home. An intense international thriller, No Escape centers on an American businessman, played by Owen Wilson, as he and his family settle into their new home in Southeast Asia. Suddenly finding themselves in the middle of a violent political uprising, they must frantically look for a safe escape as rebels uh, mercilessly attack the city. This is directed by John Eric Dowdle and written by his brother Drew. So there you go. I've seen trailers for this, uh, very hit or miss, but they're occupying, you know, living in, in the city they're in and just war erupts and they're trying desperately to get to the embassy. Um, yeah, this is the, 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 the trailer where Owen Wilson throws his, his, the actor who plays his daughter in the movie, from one rooftop to the other. Yeah. So that's the one if, if you were confused. This looks pretty intense. And, uh, you know, Owen Wilson I don't hasn't really played an action movie in a while. I think one of the last ones, wasn't he in uh, Behind Enemy Lines, I think, um, some years ago. Uh, but typically he's been doing the comedic stuff lately. So it maybe good awesome to see him. Night at the Museum. Yes, yeah. yes he was. It took me a second to be like, uh-huh. no, that was Ben Stiller. Wait, no, he was in there too. Yeah, he was yeah. in there too. So, um, yeah, moving away from the comedic stuff on this one, uh, so good for him. Next is We Are Your Friends at 48%. No, you're not. Also rated R, no, we're not. This is with Zach Efron and, uh, wow, how do you pronounce that name? Emily Rata Jaquaski. Sure. <laughs> And Wes Bentley. I can oh, pronounce that one. <laughs> Apologies for mutilating yeah, that sorry, name. But, yeah. Well, have an easier name to say. You're in show business now. Change it. Thanks. Bye. Set in the world <laughs> wow. of electric music Jeez. and Hollywood nightlife, an uh, aspiring 23-year-old DJ named Cole spends his days scheming with his childhood friends and his nights working on the one track that will set the world on fire. All of this, uh, all of this changes. Wow, that's written. Well, isn't it? It's uh, correct. All of this changes. There we go. If I knew the whole sentence, I'd be fine. <laughs> you just don't know how to read. All of this changes. <laughs> That's also true. When he meets a charismatic uh, but damaged older DJ named James, who takes him under his wing. Things get complicated, however, when Cole starts falling for James' younger uh, girlfriend, Sophie, with Cole's forbidden relationship intensifying and his friendship unraveling, he must choose between love, loyalty, and the future... He is destined for. Um, sure. Alrighty. Yeah, that's about all I have to say for that. Lastly, coming out is War Room. This has no critic rating yet, which, you know, is always looking forward two days before it's released. It is rated PG. Uh, it looks like it may be uh, kind of a low budget or foreign movie because I don't know anybody in it. Uh, Tony we and Elizabeth know, Jordan. Measure. It is. I mean, if you can't afford big name actors, it well, must no, be low you budget. Don't know them. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm <laughs> usually out at, at the scenes pretty regularly. I know these people pretty well, and I don't know any of these people. Play on, sir. No, Play on. no. You heard uh, it here. I don't good. know you. You're not big enough. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's what I said. Work more. Uh, Tony if, if and Elizabeth. If your name has not come up on an abundance of not, then obviously you have not made it yet. You have not made it. Uh, in fact, let's just have someone make it right now. Priscilla Schurer. There you go. You've made it. We now know who you are. Uh, Tony and Elizabeth Jordan have it all have have it all great jobs. That's weird. Uh, a beautiful daughter there's, there's and their dream there. house. They have They're, it all. Great jobs, a beautiful daughter, and their dream house. Yeah, Come what on, he said. Man. Dude, Read I the need copy. to be drinking. I'm sober. Leave me alone. Read the copy. <laughs> <laughs> Read the Not copy. That hard. Line. Line. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the cue cards. Just read the just copy. Just read the cue cards. Uh, but appearances can be deceiving. Tony and Elizabeth Jordan, uh, Jordan's world is actually crumbling under the strain of a failing marriage. While Tony basks in his professional success and flirts with temptation, Elizabeth resigns herself to increasing bitterness. 
but their lives take an unexpected turn when Elizabeth meets her newest client, Miss Clara, and is challenged to establish a war room and a battle plan of prayer for her family. As Elizabeth, as Elizabeth, Elizabeth tries to fight for her family, Tony's hidden struggles come to light. Tony must decide if he will make amends to his family and prove Miss Clara's wisdom that victories don't come by accident. Again, rated PG, uh, no critic rating at this point. Sounds like it's a smaller release, a uh, religious-themed film, kind of along the lines of um, Left Behind or, you know. Yeah, and obviously a, a, a kind of a, I don't want to say sappy, but relationship-heavy type movie for obvious reasons. In the box office this week, let's uh, butcher this before we can move on and butcher other stuff. <laughs> Straight out of Compton, still number one at twenty six point four million. Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation, number two at eleven point five, still doing pretty well. Sinister Two pulling in ten point five million, and Hitman: Agent Forty Seven, with its nine percent critic rating, pulling in eight point three million. I missed that one. What's that? When did Hitman come out? Probably last week when you weren't here. Oh, could and, be. It, and I think it had I... a. I think it had a 3% critic rating at that point. Was it a limited release? Because I haven't seen trailers or heard No, tra- trailers have been out. Um, okay. Yeah. We'll take Sorry, a, not in the loop here. I'll take a quick look. I was really curious about it, and then I saw that the ratings... I mean, <laughs> yeah. kind of if a ratings dead. are middle of the road, I'll go with it on Rotten Tomatoes. But when it tanks this hard, I, I have to, to um, you okay, know, kind of heat if, it. If you're a fan of the franchise, the games and the books and that yeah. thing... Yeah, and I'm, I'm not super... I like the first movie with... Um, Timothy Oliphant hmm. as Hitman. That was I, I enjoyed that. Uh, the big name in this one is Zachary Quinto, who you know is Spock, um, along with a few others. But he's he's the most recognizable one. So yeah. All right. Into, I think, the news. And in news this week, fresh out of the FAA approval process. Uh, GoGo Internet is planning on upgrading their onboard internet service, which is going to be a wonderful thing for frequent business travelers like myself. Uh, At the moment, their current service is uh, actually a cellular-based service. There's radios that communicate to the ground, um, and it is limited by geography. Obviously, there have to be cell phone towers to connect to, making it, at least for GoGo, it's mostly lower 48 And limiting the speed. Uh, Up until now, the speed has been limited to 9.8 megabits, so just barely better than a DSL connection. But keep in mind that the other end of this DSL connection is connected to the entire plane. Everybody on board is sharing the one connection. Single Single pipe. So GoGo is the company that's providing the Correct, yes. Just to clarify. Yes, so GoGo... Uh, is a third-party provider that contracts to the airline. So they provide for Delta, for American, the, the big names. They don't provide their the, – the airlines don't provide their own service. Uh, it's all contracted out through GoGo. So the news from the FAA this week, they just approved uh, a new antenna array that will go on top of the uh, aircraft and connect to satellite rather nice. than to ground stations. Upping the coverage area to um, global. Yes. Anywhere you can get a satellite signal. Um, obviously, there will need to be a satellite constellation in place to service it from above, um, but you're no longer limited by geography. And upping the speed, going from 9.8 megabits to 70, 70, 70 nice. megabits. Nice. That widens the pipe just a little bit. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So... Um, Still not sure if they're going to unblock certain bandwidth-heavy services. Uh, at the moment, things like Netflix and HBO Go and yep. Showtime, whatever Showtime's new one is. Yeah, a lot of your streaming blocked. services are all, yeah, because yep. it, it clogs the pipe. takes way too much bandwidth. Uh, the way they get around that is most of the planes now have a movie server on board. So you connect to the Internet, and there's a, a list of movies that you can watch. Okay. And it does the credit card transaction over the 
over the uh, uh, local, like a local the, network, the air to ground ground link, right? Okay. So it actually calls out to process the credit card, authorizes, and then streams you the movie from the onboard server that's on the plane through the local network. Through the local network, yeah. Thus serving or um, preserving or yeah. the precious air to ground bandwidth. Sure, but. Um, yeah, I'm not sure right now if they're going to unblock that with 70 megabits. Uh, you know, they might be able to. That's better than a decent number of home cable connections. Sure. Um, I think at home we're running, <clears throat> I think we run 45. I think we're a little bit more than that here, but uh, I don't think it's it's much more than that. Yeah, you're probably running about 50 or 60. Something like that, yep. yeah. Um, but GoGo did also say that there is a software upgrade, that they're still working on some tweaks that they may be able to course this to go as high as 100 megabits nice. without any additional hardware changes. So Sweet. there'll be an, an initial fairly heavy cost to getting this implemented. I mean, they've got to mount these on the top of the planes. Yep. Uh, but once it's up there, they'll be able to do the next step uh, over wonder, the air. I wonder how much more they're going to try to charge the passengers for connectivity with the increased cost of implementation. I don't know. It's already fairly steep. Yeah, um, you've really got to make that decision, and if you if you really need the internet for this next couple hours, yep. The best thing is I'm gonna be able to watch them like go on and be like, oh, that one has one. No, yes, no. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> want work. to be on that plane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can I change flights? But that one's not going to your destination. I don't care. Oh, where's that? that one. Route me around. <laughs> I'll take three connections, but I want that plane. <laughs> that one's going the complete opposite direction, sir. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll take a six-hour flight instead of the three-hour flight of where I need to go, as long as I have internet for that entire six That's hours. That's right. I really want to watch Pacific Rim again. <laughs> <laughs> there, there have been occasions where I've needed, you know... I've been in the middle of some work that has to get done, um, yep. so there have been occasions where I've needed to do it. Um, like I said, they're fairly proud of their connection. That's awesome. Half half hour half hour session typically runs about nine bucks, depending on the length of the flight. It can be you know twenty thirty dollars for a yeah. couple hour flight. I mean, they're proud of it. Yeah. But like you said, when you've got to be connected, when it's critical. You know, you're going to pay it. But That's it, if, why I really lean towards uh, a lot of those third-party, you know, those portable hard drives that you can wirelessly connect to on your local devices for entertainment purposes. Yes. It's not going to get you to the Internet, but, uh, you know, if you're on a five-hour coast-to-coast flight or have to go through a couple jumpers, you can bring something along to have plenty of entertainment with you without having to spend that money for connectivity. Absolutely. But check out the link in the show notes because the photos are actually kind of cool. It's a couple of self-tracking, low-profile satellite dishes. Yep. Yeah. No, they're sweet looking. Um, it'll. They've already been working on the streamlining and stuff, and they say it will not add significant amount of drag to the aircraft. So no. yeah, it looks like something like that would. Yeah. I mean, no fuel wouldn't take much to put a slight skirt around it to help with yep. aerodynamics to not be a problem. Well, and if you look at the photo work, which I've got it pulled up here in studio, so definitely check out the link. But it's got a clear sheet over it, which will eventually be, um, you know, painted the same yeah. color as the aircraft. Oh, but, so I won't be able to see it, dang it. Well, you'll be able to see it's got a bump. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it'll, it's it'll have a, a plane. The plane's bump. got a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to start looking now. <laughs> yes. I know how to yes. look for it later. That's right. Look for the internet bump. There you go. Well, from one piece of aircraft to another... Uh, California, for some of us California residents, are looking to hamper the drone flying or quadcopter or unmanned uh, aerial privately vehicle. owned aerial vehicle, however you want to say it. Um, I think the technical term for most of us is a multi-rotor. Uh, however, technically, RC planes and other types of devices do fall into this category. California is making it harder and harder to fly in your backyard. Uh, the biggest concern and the biggest uh, cause for this is the privacy factor. You know, if you're flying over your backyard and say you have a camera on it, you may not be filming your neighbors, but if a camera's got wide enough view, you can see three, four, or five houses of, of, you know, people's technically private property. What the law is potentially going to impose is that you cannot fly over someone else's property under a 300-foot elevation 
or altitude rather. So you can't go higher than 400, but you can't go lower than 300. 350. Three f- o- over residential areas. So they're so essentially you're saying have some really accurate avionics then, because you've got a fifty foot window. You yeah. have a fifty foot legal window to stay above the privacy threshold, but under the FAA threshold. Well, that's going to make it fun. It's so I'm of mixed feelings here. Uh, now being a multi rotor owner, um, pilot, pilot. Well, no, sorry. Owner. 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 I'm not piloting it yet. (laughs) Um, Operator, I know. Listen, I've found a bunch of ways to learn how to crash already, and I've gotten really, really good at that. This is Thomas Edison work here. That's right. This is is the Wright Brothers. 400 ways to to crash one. (laughs) Not create an operating multi rotor. (laughs) So, my mixed feelings come in this, and and other uh, pilot operators may get mad at me here. Uh, How much. What are you really getting out of flying in your backyard on on a decent size multi rotor? I'm talking 250 millimeter diameter and bigger. The people that are really flying aggressive or, or you know, uh, in that size, your DJI Phantoms are about that size, etc. Not your fifty dollar home kid. Yeah, I mean that's for Christmas. That's kinda. not the concern. That doesn't impose any danger. Most don't have cameras. If they do, they're not recording. Uh, some might have that ability, but they're not going to be operating. Brad's looking at me really, really <laughs> Sorry. kind of like a kid in candy store. Um, <laughs> you know, but they're not going to have the altitude and control that the bigger ones have to where it's a deliberate uh, movement. But the bigger ones do have that control. But what, are you, what kind of experience are you really getting if you're living in tight enough quarters to where you're violating that privacy threshold? So my mentality is, if you're really gonna, if you really want to fly and get the most out of flying, you're gonna go somewhere to where you can have that kind of experience and opportunity. You're probably not gonna get that in your neighborhood, and so on that front, I can see where the the bill, the potential bill, makes sense. But the flip side of that coin is, well, I bought this. I'm not infringing on anybody's rights if I don't have a camera. What's the harm? Aside from it losing control, crashing to someone's window and hitting somebody, um, you know, aside, from, you know, there's n- very minimal risk of danger here in the grand scheme of things. The probability it's, of that happening is pretty low. It's a brushstroke. It's like, well, how do you prove you didn't have a camera or did have a camera? Well, when the guy shoots it down with a shotgun and see there's no camera there. More on that here in a little bit. <laughs> but, um <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's it's I'm of two minds. I get maybe why the bill is coming into place. Does it make 100 percent sense? Not really, but um, there's there's maybe some some aspects of truth provoking this. But here again is where we get into what we've talked about before, and that is that the idiots yes. have really, I mean, they're they're in the process of ruining it. Yes, you know, they're up until they're on now, the right way to. Banning this yeah, whole industry. Yeah, so up until now, we've had some pretty relaxed, i.e. none, no yeah. no oversight, no regulation, just some basic guidelines that those of us that are responsible stick to. Because, you know, we want to be able to do this freely and without hindrance. Um, like you, I understand why they're doing this, but it just kind of ticks me off that it's those few idiots that can't stick to the basic rules, you know. And we covered this, well, I wasn't on last week, so a couple weeks ago. Yes. You know, interfering with medical uh, life lights, interfering with firefighting, interfering with, you know, full-size commercial aircraft in commercial airspace. Yes. Come on. There's really one basic rule that applies to everything, and that is... Don't be put, stupid. Well, don't be <laughs> stupid, but, but really it comes down to put people first. You know, if you're in a big crowded park, that's probably not the best place to fly if you lose control and something happens. If you're in your neighborhood, you know, you may not want to be seeing what may or may not be going on in someone's backyard. Um, But if it falls out of the sky and you're where someone else's property exists or, you know, whatever, uh, it's probably not the best place to fly. Um, You know, if you're if there's any risk of aircraft where people are involved. Avoid it. But if people are your top priority, you cannot get yourself into trouble. 
well, challenge accepted. <laughs> You if can always a, will yourself into trouble. But okay, if you, but... But you, you get where I'm going with this. No, I get where you're going with this. But again, it comes it comes back down to, if I don't have a camera on it, why can't I practice in my backyard? Sure. It's my property. Yes. Yes, I get the privacy aspects of it. And obviously we've had that with, uh, you know, the guy that sh- shot the drone out of the sky yes. with his shotgun. Oh, God, this was actually a thing? I thought yes. you were joking. Damn. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, what happened uh, again? Oh, was it again? There's another one. In New Jersey, a guy was flying in a street. Someone else came out with a shotgun in the street and shot it down in New Jersey. Okay, now see, that one I have a problem with. This is brand new. This guy is facing prosecution mm-hmm. because New Jersey isn't really keen on fire, discharging a firearm in a public area. The street's a public area. Mm-hmm. He's currently out on bail, but he could be facing up to 10 years yeah. for a two-minute decision. The previous and, one, though, was an actual privacy violation. Yes, um, a guy flew a, a quad, I suppose. I think it was a, it was e- it was it was a larger. It was either a four rotor or bigger. Yeah, but it was a pretty Into large his diameter. Yard. His daughter Down was out low, southern his sunbathing. Was out sunbathing. The guy came out with a shotgun and shot, shot it. it out of the sky. Yes, I've seen one where it's it's a, a girl is sunbathing on top of a roof. And she, and she starts chasing it down, with, holding the towel, chasing it down with a broom. But okay, but if you're so yeah, really, you know I mean. really, yeah. this California law is is trying to express that if you as a resident uh, are expecting a reasonable amount of privacy. Yeah. Now, reasonable is a very subjective <laughs> term, but you know we we believe that in our backyards we have a reasonable amount of privacy. Mm-hmm. But if our neighbor is up on their roof cleaning out storm drains, they can see everything in your backyard. So, you know, you've got to be mindful of that. If she's down inside the confines of a backyard, she's expecting a reasonable amount of privacy. If she's sitting up on her roof sunbathing, you're putting yourself for everyone to see. There's Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of... You're not getting necessarily a close-up picture, but you're visible to... A larger demographic. That depends. There are rooftop gardens and rooftop spaces that are still private. That's true. I guess when I hear roof, I I think actual shingled, sloped environment. And I doubt that. That topped with like an an apartment complex. Yeah. Okay. Some places have their pool on their roof. Sure. But this but it was just paved like white, so I don't know. Yeah, but some of the apartments have uh, mm-hmm. like a, a roof deck. So yeah, sure, it, it wasn't a roof deck. I mean, it was just solid white with the entrance thing. Okay, so it wasn't necessarily a design space, and that you get into a grayer area. On can you expect reasonable privacy when you've you've put yourself high up that more people have the potential to see you? So th- that's kind of where this new bill that they're trying to push through uh, is is phrased and minded. So, but yeah, no, in New Jersey, yeah, this guy could be facing up to 10 years for, for that. That's the most recent one that I happened earlier joking, this week. Nope. nope. All right. So, um, you know, and, and again, if he put people first, discharging a shotgun in a public area is not putting people first. So who's, who's the bigger risk there? The drone pilot or a guy running around the shotgun? Well, you think this, you know, the person with the shotgun, he shoots it, stops the thing from working and then falls on someone. That or a spare um, buckshot, birdshot, whatever comes up. What goes up must come down and hit somebody. You know, there's chaos. So remember this. If it's a nuisance to you, it's probably a nuisance to other people. Put people first. Now, speaking about guns, police thwarted. Thwarted? Thwarted. There you go. Yeah. A very... Horrific event at the Pokemon World Championships. Pokemon Championships are a horrific event. Yes. Where two gentlemen decided to show up to the event with semi-automatic weaponry in their car. And ammo for the weapons. Basically going to start a shooting spree at the World Championships of Pokemon. I applaud them. Jeez. You no, horrible. I'm not. This is sarcasm. <laughs> I don't condone that thought. Um, haha. Brad just flicked my arm. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Well, I'm glad they stopped it. Yeah. I mean, where do you go on this one? Um, On one hand, you have a Pokemon tournament. On the other hand, you have people willing to shoot the Pokemon tournament. Which one's the bigger danger to society? (laughs) Gaming? (laughs) Mass shooting. But gaming causes violence, didn't you know that? (laughs) BS. I can call so, so a couple guys with semi-automatic weapons in their car attended or planned to attend, and the police were some, somehow alerted and prevented. Through, uh, pri- through private security conjunction when, with the event and okay. speaking with, yeah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Renter cops are beneficial. And it, yeah. Tried. Two points. <laughs> <laughs> so and, was there any, I mean, I, I'm not familiar with the story, so. Yep. Um, was there any indication that they were planning to shoot this place up, or I did think, they just have it in their car, legally owned? Uh, I think it was, had, had it in their car, but they were charged with, uh, unlaw, unlawful possession of weaponry. Alrighty. And so, unlawful not possession. Not legally owned. And unlawful possession of ammo. So, so they th- must have carried around a substantial quantity then. Yeah. So the, they were, yeah, they were charged. Uh, there's been no meaning of what entails in their punishment. I'm gonna say. So, pretty, what, did they make any? Was it documented they made threats or anything that would have indicated this, or just uh, a security observed that hey, these guys are looking shifty in this car? And I believe it was. It wasn't. They didn't make any threats. But you know, never be too safe. Okay. No, it's it's people are showing up with unlawful possessions of firearms, semi-automatic firearms. But in I mean, a public place where a big event is going on. I, I get that, but I guess my concern is if it was in the car, how was it found out? I mean, I think, unless they were waving the gun at the window or starting to point at people. I mean, I think it's what happens is they showed up. Okay. Then. And someone passed by their car and saw saw it and then reported it. Okay. So, okay, allegedly, you know, sure. they were they were planning on it. Sure. But again, safety is the probably concern, is the highest concern. Yep. So it's potentially thwarted a very big problem. Very good. Be interesting to see how. Uh what laws they charge, ch- charge them under. I can understand the illegal firearms. I didn't know that there was a quantity of ammo that was illegal. I don't know if there is or isn't, but if they're yeah. charging them with that, then there's something must be... Something up. Yeah. That's interesting. Sure. Unless... I there mean, are control... There is such a thing as controlled ammo. There's, you know, you're, it, you're not allowed to own armor-piercing rounds or incendiary rounds, so... Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the, makes me curious. But another thing I just thought up here is that we always like to, not us, but people always like to blame the police and some, they do something bad. But we're, we never hear about them doing something good. And that's, that could be a testament to, you know, the thing it, with what they do is when you do it right, no one really knows you did it at all. You did your job. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it's we only, call that victory by, or, uh, it's only the bad victory stuff. By, no, not you, victory by success, but uh, what, do we, what do I say at work all the time when I mention I, it at work? I don't um, know. What do you say? It's like, it's... I'm usually not listening yeah, when you're usually talking. Yeah, usually we're... <laughs> wah, 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 Exactly. I'm not around, um, so you're going to have to help us here. Victim victim of your successes. Hmm. Be, be, when, it, when it works, no one pays any attention yeah. to it. But when it doesn't work, that's where the fingers get pointed and the red flags get raised. That's, yeah. Yeah. Victim of success. So I'm going to pull both discussions together here. Woohoo! So we've got uh, drones and we've got firearms. Settle in, kids. Because this is going to be a good one. (laughs) Okay. Police in North North Dakota are now uh, armed, forgive the pun, with a new uh, law. Is it armed? Because I think they need two. What? Two arms. Two arms. No. To carry the control? Never mind. Anyway, uh, passage of bill number 1328. Now, sit in, sit, sit down and uh, 
buckle your seatbelt for this one because this is going to be a. We <laughs> need you to listen very. This is going to be a little bit of a twisted closely. ride. If you're already sitting, get up and sit back down. Yeah. Reset. This is how it's going to work. Reboot That's the right. system. We need That's you to get comfortable here. Undo your seatbelt unless you're driving. Don't undo Why your seatbelt. You? <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> And now redo your seatbelt. Okay. Here we go. Bill 1328. Sponsored by Representative Rick Becker, Republic from, Republican from Bismarck, was introduced as a bill to limit the police surveillance power and ban all weapons on police drones. Okay. That's how this started. He sponsored it, got it on the table then a police lobby group got a hold of it and introduced some amendments to it which now allow the police in North Dakota to arm drones with less than lethal weapons uh, uh, you can't see the air quotes <laughs> but uh, less than lethal uh, in air quotes here uh, including Rubber bullets, tear gas, tasers, and other non-lethal yep. weapons. Pepper spray, uh, sound cannons. Yeah. Among among the many options. Sound cannon. That sounds awesome. There's been a lot of actually really cool tests on uh, sonic weapons mm -hmm. to debilitize uh, uh, potential threats. There's a really cool show on, on History Channel just to veer off called future weapons one of them yep. was this giant sound sound cannon that you can't that. operate in its in its field of effect anyway so making you know the the second piece of this one two punch north dakota is one of only six test sites where the faa allows drones to be flown up to 1200 feet above the ground over the entire state. So that's only three times higher than the yeah. uh, residential or privately owned drone mm -hmm. laws. Yeah, yeah. Um, Interesting. They can fly that high, but it doesn't interfere with FAA uh, flight paths? Hmm. How peculiar. I'm guessing that the exclusion zone around airports still applies. Probably. And, and since they have their helicopters and stuff, too, I'm sure it's... Right, the, right. The, uh, the original bill sponsor... Um, commented that he's not in full agreement with this. Well, duh. Yep. This is not the bill you introduced. <laughs> um, yeah. And he wishes that it, it had continued to ban any any weapon. He is yep. of the opinion that drones should not be weaponized at all. Correct. Period. So, yeah. He so, said even, even less than lethal weapons can kill. At least uh, 39 people have been killed by police tasers in 2015. So just because their weapons aren't designed to be lethal doesn't mean that they can't cause lethal force. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever saw the movie The Last Castle with Robert Redford about the yes. jail. And they all had rubber bullets. That was a yet good movie. It's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. But all the prison guards had rubber bullets, and yet somehow inmates died by guards. Yep. Strange how that works. Anyway. Yeah. So. So don't move to North Dakota. Pretty much. That's what I'm learning here. Yeah, yeah. Now, I would assume. Where they have high-flying weaponized drones. That's right. Now, we've all seen the, the paintball drone. Uh, or people that have done paintball drones. Not seen it in person, although that would be sweet. Um, and I remember seeing an article maybe a couple months back about someone who put like a 9mm on a drone and made it functional. Mm-hmm. And I remember the police saying something like, it's, well, it's technically not illegal. Mm -hmm. um, but now you got... Well, although, both the police and the FAA have weighed in on that. Yeah. Both of them have decided that he technically didn't break any laws. However, there is an ongoing federal investigation. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah. Come on, man! <laughs> uh, Some things just should not be done. No. Just because you can doesn't necessarily follow that you should. I mean, let's face it, though. It didn't take long. And, I mean, if you no. can put a commercial-grade camera on a drone, putting a 9mm Glock isn't any weight compared to a commercialized <laughs> DSLR or I know. whatever. Yeah. So, 
Yep. I'm almost surprised it took as long as it did, really. We don't condone this, no. by the way. No. Just so people make sure. Yeah. Per, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles should be used for peaceful purposes in a friendly manner that does not invade your neighbor's privacy. That's right. Should not be used for perversion or violence. Exactly. But if you want the most intense experience possible, get yourself an FPV gear. You want to talk about virtual reality? No, this is this is the way to go. Because <laughs> although it's virtual, it's actually not virtual. It's right. kind of this. It's not necessarily augmented either. Although I'd love for someone to do a FPV drone on something like a Hololens, where you could still kind of see your environment. You could almost have keep line of sight with it while also having a FPV. But I wonder how that would gauge the motor and response functionality. I'm guessing that the first several hundred people that tried it would puke. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, people? I'm, I'm compl- Garrett likes puking. I do like, no. I'd like to see a hundred people puke. <laughs> That'd be funny. Symphony of puke. There you go. As long as it's not you. So, uh, keeping on the drone, 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 drone theme this week. So we've talked to many. We've talked many much about U.S. FAA. Many much. Many much. <laughs> That's right. Show title <laughs> about hey, FAA Garrett? potential limitations hey, regulations. You English, real good. <laughs> I learned to spoke very much better. Sorry, guys. I think I think I need to reboot him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Europe Fatal is fol- is following suit in the potential for drone regulations. Uh, Berlin and Frankfurt in Germany. Um, as of today, uh, have implemented no drone zones uh, and trying to implement software to block flights in in sensitive areas. So instead of them making a law for it, they're just going to put up frequency jammers, essentially, and fly in there and your drone loses signal and either has to... It either would have to return to home based on the functionality of them or drop out of the sky. (laughs) Just, Sounds interesting. You have to pay to get it back, and it's like, here's the piece, here's another piece. Uh, the use here's of civil piece. drones, uh, whether for commercial purposes such as crop surveillance or monitoring of natural disasters, photography, or whatnot, uh, or just for fun, uh, is obviously on the rise, as we've seen here. But, um, yeah, Europe is looking to better manage it. <laughs> I guess I guess is the quick and dirty way to say that. You know, again, stop being stupid. I'm it's, pretty I, impressed I with the their their philosophy and management, though. Yeah, that's impossible. Well, don't be stupid. I, yeah, what's called mass genocide is what we need. Well, but. Einstein says two things are infinite in this reality: the universe and human stupidity. You know, and I think we're past the point of don't be stupid anymore. I think we've already crossed... People being malicious? Well, no. I think we've already crossed the threshold. Yeah. We had our grace period. We had the opportunity to do this responsibly. And there are idiots out there. And they've ruined it for everybody because we're already in the process of, you know, the regulation and tighter controls. And I think we have already... We've already ruined it. Yeah. Now, from the... Um, very small multi-rotor community that I I'm not going to say that I'm a part of but that I, I monitor from time to time it is the growing consensus that the problem uh, problem individuals so to speak are typically the people that will go to um, I'll take Best Buy for an example because they offer them too they go to a store like Best Buy or even Fry's or whatever and they buy a ready to fly unit no assembly required, plug the battery in, turn it on, and go fly, and are totally unaware of rules and regulations, don't know any different, go fly and put themselves into trouble. Whereas most of the people that are assembling them themselves, like myself, like many, many others, who are looking to these communities for input and information and guidance are passively seeing that there's these laws and regulations and are taking the steps to better educate themselves because they are putting that investment into it and they are respecting the the hobby and the world that that's in 
and want to preserve their own experience and also those around them. It's, it's, so I'm not saying that all people that buy ready-to-fly units are a problem. I'm not saying that everyone who builds their own copter is fine and upstanding. But on an average, by percentage, it, t- it seems to be the ready-to-fly people are more of an issue um, from an ignorant standpoint than kit builders. Is there any way to like to help that though? Is the thing? Um, you know, it's it, it, can you put in you know paper saying you know, a go look at this before you do this, but people just you know. But from a commercial standpoint, you want to sell all the products you can. So from a company like Best Buy or the drone maker, they want as many of those things to fly off the shelves as possible because they are a thousand dollars a piece, fly and it's off profit. The Yes. When he I, did that. I saw, you what, you saw did what I did there? Yeah, I saw yeah. what you did there. You want to know something funny? Mm. That was subconscious. <laughs> um, you know, but they want they want to sell the products. But the, it comes down to consumers not doing their research. Yes. I'll throw another one at you. This one's another three-letter government organization. This time it's the FCC. Yes. Walk into Best Buy. You've seen the family radio, two-way radios. Yes. You know, the good for 28 miles or good for, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Sure. Operates under the family, family, I don't I don't remember the acronym anymore, family something radio service. Right? Okay. Walkie-talkies. You know you're only allowed to use, I think it's seven of the channels that they well, I know that one is an emergency-only channel. Um, but yeah, uh, that's about all I know. Okay. So, you're only allowed to use certain, cert- the lower of the channels. I think it's one through seven. Don't quote me on that. No. But they will do 20-something channels. Yes. All the upper channels, you're supposed to have a license for. Nice. Uh-huh. I'm sure it's in a manual somewhere, but yes, who it's. reads the manuals? You you pull it out of the box, you put batteries in it, you turn it on, you go to the other room, and can you hear me now? Yeah. You pick the channel that has the least interference, and you go. Yeah. Guess who has a license for it? Yeah. You didn't think that's horrifying. Remember when we used to do walkie-talkies for doing paintball? Yes. Imagine someone ca- catching up on that, but like, oh, yeah, they're going around here. Yeah? Freak some people out. We were doing this on, we were doing paintball on a... Was it Marine Base? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We're on Camp Pendleton. Yeah, intercepted. Yeah. You're going to, no, shoot him. No, don't shoot that one. Shoot that one. Yeah. Yeah. That'll go over well. Uh, anywho. Nice. Continuing on. Um, well, not much continuing on unless you're going to be short and sweet. Ah, uh, okay then. That's cool. I guess that's keep on gaming. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Wade doesn't want to be short and sweet. He wants to be long and sour. Ladies. Um, <laughs> we do, um, with this abrupt end, we do thank you for listening, of course, and do encourage you to visit us at Facebook, facebook.com forward slash abundance dot not. Uh, once again, hit us up on Twitter uh, at abundance not. Wade is also on Twitter now. A-A-O-N Seawall. So, yeah. Is it 599? A-O-N-C-Wall 599. So check that out as well. And once again, if we do get up to, or when we do get up to 500, uh, we'll have a special little... uh, Little something. Little something, something. So uh, keep posted, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. That's a wrap. Keep on gaming.